A little while back, I was out shooting. It was a sunrise shoot and I had this fantastic shot all set up. I had this beautiful big rock pool in the foreground and I was all ready to take the shot. I just had to set the polarizer and I noticed that when I had the polarizer set, unfortunately, it wasn't um, affecting the whole of the rock pool. It was only affecting part of the rock pool. And look, this wasn't the polarizer's fault. It was just the time of the day. It was early morning. The sun was behind me. It was very low. So because of those angles, your polarizer is going to affect different parts. And sometimes this can be a bit of an issue when using a polarizer is that it doesn't, um, it doesn't work over our whole scene. So I really needed this to work because this shot, it, it wasn't going to work without that pool being completely polarized. So what I did was I rotated the polarizer until I saw the effect starting to come in on the left hand side of the pool. And I took a shot and then I rotated the polarizer till the effect started moving across the pool a little bit more and took another shot. And so I ended up taking four shots and within those four, I know that I had the whole pool covered with the polarizer. And my intent then was to drop those into Photoshop and look, normally what I would do is I just manually blend them in with layer masks. And look, this is, it's not a real quick, uh, easy process. It's a little bit tedious. So that always sort of puts me off doing this type of thing. Um, and consequently, the file sat there, you know, for a little bit. And I actually found these the other day and I thought, I'll have a crack at that. And then I had an idea. I knew there was a blending mode it's actually the blending mode that we use for focus stacking. So I thought, well, what if I try that? If that works, then it's gonna save me a bucket load of time. And guess what? It does. So that's what we're doing today. I'm gonna to take you into Photoshop and I'll just show you how to really quickly blend these images is so as that we, um, we have the full effect of a polarizer across our image. Now, before we do that, I just want to let you guys know what I'm doing now is I'm adding chapter markers to these videos. So watch this video right through. And then if you want to have a crack at doing one of these yourself and you want to come back to the video as a bit of help to help you along the way, then um, I've got a timestamp in the description. You can jump to any part at any time. Or another way of doing it is just bring your mouse down onto the timeline and just scrub along and it'll just show you where the chapters are. So it'll make it quick and easy for you to, to jump to any part of the video at any time. Okay, well let's run that intro and we'll get started. Righto, so these are my four files. I'll just quickly show you these. These are straight out of camera, so they've had no processing at all. So this is the first one, and as you can see in the rock pool, it's pretty good. It's almost sort of like three quarters of the way, but that right hand side has just got some glare on it. So that was my first shot where the polarizer was starting to work sort of on the left hand side. The second shot, it's more sort of centered in the middle and then the third shot, it comes across quite strongly into that right hand side. And you can see the left hand side now is flared up. And then the fourth one was just right down in that right hand corner. Now, the other thing you need to do with this process, I'll just open this one and show you, is if you have uh, an image like this that has moving water, then when we blend these, there's a pretty good chance that the water's going to get all mucked up. So what you need to do is go through, go through your series of shots and decide which one is the one that you want to keep as your, basically your background. So you're sort of like keeping that one shot and then we're just replacing the foreground. So out of these ones, uh, my favorite is this first one. I like that background the best with the, the motion in the water. So you just need to make a note of, uh, of which one of those you want to keep the background in. Okay, so I'm here in Bridge and I just want to show you a quick way of, of uh, applying some raw edits equally over these four images really quickly. So I just open this first one and look, these don't need a lot of adjustment. As you can see, my histogram is really good. I've got lots of good tones. Um, but in this, I just want to lift the shadows a little bit because it sort of really lightens that 
rock pool up and we will just back the highlights off a little bit and we're just going to add a little bit of texture and a little bit of clarity. So once I've done that to that first image, I just go done. Now I can apply those same edits to these three and this is fine to do this as long as you aren't making an exposure adjustment and these vary, but these are all very similar. So we just highlight the other three and we come up here to edit and we go develop settings, previous conversion. Okay, and that will now apply those edits that I applied to the first one over these other three. So I now have four images that have had uh, the raw file adjusted all in the same way and these are now ready to drop into Photoshop. Now as I said I'm in Bridge here. If, you're not, if you don't use Bridge then all you really need to do is open your four files into Photoshop and then lay them on top of each other. So you, it needs to be one file um, with these four images as layers. But from Bridge there's a really quick easy way of doing it. We just highlight the four files and we come up here to Tools and we go Photoshop, Load Files into Photoshop as Layers. So what that will now do is it will bring those four files in but as, instead of as separate files it's going to lay them on top of each other as a layered file. And this is what we need to be able to do this blending process. Now as a, as a workflow thing you, you would be best to do this right at the start. Don't edit your images or edit your image and then try and do this process across the pool. You need to do it first and then once you've done that then you would go through and finish editing your file. Remember I said we needed to uh, decide on which image we want to use as the background and I wanted the first one so it was this layer here that happens to be on top. So what you need to do first before you start this process is just cut this background out and create a new layer from it. Now it's really quick and easy to do. So we just select the lasso tool which is a freehand tool for making um, selections. It's just up here. Okay, and we want the top one, so the shortcut is L on your keyboard. And then we just need to come in and we just run around the whole background and we just basically select everything except the pool. Now I'm going to add a little bit of feathering on this just to make it nice and smooth. Uh, so we come up here to select and mask and we come down to feathering and we will apply about 30 pixels. So what this does, how this is different to general feathering is if I just went feather, it feathers every edge. But when we use the select and mask, then it's only gonna feather this edge through here. It doesn't feather the edges that are on the side of your image. So we just go okay. We've got now got that selection and this bottom edge is feathered. We cut that out as a new layer, so um, Command J. So that was Command J on a Mac or Windows J on a Windows machine. Now we'll just turn those other layers off and you can see that we now have our background cut out and we've got that sitting up on top of our layer stack. And you can just see I just added that little bit of feathering there just to sort of help it blend in. Okay, we'll turn these other layers back on. So now to blend these other four layers, what we need to do is we need to select them. So just click on the, the first one and then just hold your shift key down and select the other three. So we now have those four layers selected and the first thing we're going to do is just go through and auto align. So edit auto align layers and we just leave it on auto. You've got a couple of other things here, vignette removal and geometric distortion fix. I just leave those unticked, that's all fine. You just go OK. So what that will do is it will just align those layers in case 
uh, there's anything slightly out of whack. It shouldn't be because it was all, all uh, taken on a tripod. But we would have had a little bit of movement in here with some of these and some of these grasses underneath. There would have been a little bit of movement. And you can see what we've what it's done is it's moved the layers and we've got a little bit of transparency up on the edges here. But that's all right, it's not a problem. Okay, so now we want to blend these. So we still have the four selected and we just come up to edit again and we come down to auto blend layers. And so this is a blend mode where you would make a panorama. We want to stack these images. So we select the bottom one stack and this just fixes up your tones. Um, so I have that one selected. And if we click content aware, then what it will do is it will fill in these little transparent areas. So once they are selected, we just hit OK and that will now blend those four layers. And it will get rid of all of the bits that we don't want and our pool will be uh, completely polarized. Okay, so that's finished blending. You can see what it's done is it adds masks to each layer and then it masks areas out and it only allows certain parts of it to be seen. And then it creates a merged layer on top there. Yeah, and as you can see, it's done a great job. We now have the pool that has the polarized light all the way through, absolutely amazing. So as you can see, that only takes you know, a couple of minutes to do and it's much, much easier rather than you know, making all these layers and then masking and then masking bits in and out. So what I would do now is I would flatten this image. If uh, we've got all those layers and we're happy with everything, there's no need to keep those now. So let's just come up here to layer, come down to flatten image and that will flatten it down into one layer. And you are now ready to carry on and finish editing your image. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoyed that one. And just keep that in mind, if you are out shooting and you're using a polarizer and it's not polarizing the whole scene, which sometimes it doesn't, then don't be content with that. Just know that you can, um, you can set this up, take about four shots, drop it into Photoshop, couple of minutes work, and you've got, you've got your shot where your scene is completely polarized. Now, before I go, I just want to say a big, big thank you to everyone that's been following my channel and watching these videos. Really, really appreciate all your feedback and all your comments. And it's great to hear that you guys are getting some enjoyment out of these. And I will definitely keep some content coming for you. Okay, you guys have a great day and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya, bye.